Hi, my name is Tori Shendel Cox. I'm the Virginia G. Schrader Curator of Art at the Evansville Museum of Arts, History, and Science. And I'm extremely excited today because we have uh, one of our interns, Reen, who's going to share her research with you. Reen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Hi, guys. My name is Reen Aloui, and this is my presentation about Iranian epic poems. So let's get started. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm a senior in uh, archaeology and I have a minor in art history and I, I really love art. So this is a great opportunity for me to analyze art and find more about it. And this is more information about me if you want to read it by your own. Next slide, please. Okay, so a little bit about the history um, of Iran. And I'm really just focusing on one big event, uh, which is uh, the Mongol invasion of Iran, which happened in 1220 and 1258. Um, this is a very devastating experience for a lot of uh, Iranian because um, Seriously, Genghis Khan wiped all the population, about 80%. And um, uh, also like it messed up the irrigation systems for um, Iran. And due to that, um, a lot of people uh, felt the need that they need to emigrate from uh, that country to a more peaceful country. And um, and how that connects to the artwork is uh, the authors and the poets um, really did just travel the way um, when the war happened. Um, so yeah, this is a picture of uh, Mongol invasion to Iran. Um, and as you can see, the fights between the two. Uh, so yeah, next slide, please. <laughs> Okay, so the first artifacts that I want to talk about is this one. Um, this is a Garden of Rose by Shadi Shirazi. Um, he is a very great poet. Um, he traveled through Anatolia, um, like Arabian Valley. And um, we know he's a Muslim because most of his artwork was inspired by um, old Muslim manuscripts, uh, especially Quran and Sunnah. Um, so he was really um, popular, popular um, in the Middle Ages in Europe. So a lot of people felt the need to collect their, his artwork um, in, in like Western um, side of the world. So, um, yeah. Um, so a little bit more uh, about this artwork. This is uh, Gul Gulistan or the Garden of Roses. That's how it translates. And this poem is, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Um, okay, so this poem was very popularized because of the rhythmic uh, structure. Um, so he got inspired by, um, as we said, like all Arab manuscripts, but also um, the people in the Arabian Valley. He got inspired by the language uh, itself. Hmm. So, um, Arabic and then he uh, took this inspiration and put it um, and popularized it more in Persia. So so the rhythm in this poem is um, Arabic standard and uh, so people like um, in Persia thought this is um, elevation from the past. Um, so uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get the actual translation of this poem, but however, um, I will um, 
do like some popular themes in his um, book. Uh, so one theme was really popular was um, empathy. And in his collection of uh, Garden of Roses, and one poem was called uh, Benny Adam, which is translated to a human being. Um, so this poem, he referred to Benny Adam as all human beings. And Sadi want uh, like people to think that we are all as like one body. So um, if one person um, like got hurt, we need to hurry up and care for that person. It's like your body when you got headache, mm -hmm. everybody's like every like every part of your body is like worrying about your head. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> so um, that creates um, like empathy and um, unity to the uh, society. Mm -hmm. And this is a very like specific example that he got off from uh, the sunnah the sunnah which means uh the tells and the sayings of prophet muhammad mm -hmm. so this is clearly inspired by him and i'm gonna read um the exact uh, like phrase from sunnah that says the exact same thing uh so so this is a hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The believers are like one person. If his head aches, the whole body aches with fever and sleeplessness. <laughs> okay, so there is clearly close similarity between the two, and clearly he got inspired by Islamic manners, mm -hmm. and. Um, in the beginning of Islam, um, when the storytelling uh, happened, um, the morals are really the main focus of, of it all. So in any story, in any um, sunnah, in any like Quran, there is um, like big storytelling and, the, and like there is definitely like a moral or like uh, a message that you need to behave a certain way um, for society to be completed. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is a little bit about uh, his themes, like one of his themes. Um, but it's to me, it's a really great poem with a huge style. Uh, I think the style of the poem is very consistent. Uh, there is like rectangular shapes that uh, create rhythm and like makes your eyes go a certain way. Um, there is also like flowers and some people say that this is like lotus flower. Mm. Um, we don't know for sure. Um, so it's, it's really beautiful how it, the book named Garden of Roses and, and every page you see roses inside the poem itself um he really didn't focus much about uh, uh people like faces um maybe i'm guessing because um many muslim um artifact or like art do not really focus on people faces and focus more on calligraphy and uh more in-depth meaning mm -hmm. and rather than um just faces <laughs> so um this is a really cool poem uh i really enjoyed searching about it and uh yeah so oh. we can go to the next one before want. we go to the next slide do you think that the poet was inspired by his uh uh force um essentially exodus from Iran um, because what's beautiful about this is when you look at this it does look like almost an overview of a garden and possibly yes. if you follow the the writing which if you have a strategy in how you even read this I would appreciate that because I'm not used to a beautiful <laughs> script like this um, but it almost looks like this is a place where you would see this script try to imagine yourself in a garden and find solace do you think that there's some overlapping themes and that to really get your mind into this piece more metaphysically 
Right. Um, I do think that because um, if you want to read this poem, mm -hmm. you go at the top. Uh, so, <laughs> starting here? Uh, top right. Oh, top right. Ooh. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and then you go all the way down like that. Yeah, yeah. And then you go and then you go like down and then like this. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> now, would this be like a marking script, like starts, or is it something about importance, like this red script here? Yeah. Um, so I know that word. Oh. Which, <laughs> I know one word, which means, uh, um, hikmet means wisdom. So maybe he want to highlight that, or it could be a person's name, which who wrote this oh, no not write this but maybe draw this oh um, but uh, i'm not sure because it's the only thing highlighted in this whole thing um mm -hmm. but yeah it's pretty cool and i think uh, his travel travels inspired this because as you said it's an air view like of a garden um and one thing that is important to muslims i think is meditation of god creation and maybe he's trying to do that also in his uh poems so i'm just guessing but yeah that's great though yeah now scoot over to the next slide okay so this next uh art is very <laughs> tricky <laughs> so i tried to um figure out how to do this and the best way i found out about this is by comparing it to other artworks that have similar um like art and um calligraphy so this is the closest thing that i could find which is um this manuscript from uh, the Met Museum and it's called Rustam come from Kabul to Bay hom homage to Kai Kasru. hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> so <laughs> this is a folio from uh, Shah Nama, which is the Book of King by Abu Qasim Ferdowsi. So this poet is really um, popular also. Uh, he was a very great poet in Iran and his, uh, this book in specific is like, is one of the like biggest epic poems in the whole world. Mm. It's like, yeah, it's, it's really big. It's like 50,000 um, like poetry and also it's 50 books like 50 like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's really big and it talks about um a history of iran from like the mythical creatures until the islamic rulers so to me i think this is a great like history account for all the history of iran and like whenever we need to know more about their history we just look at this book and be like wow yeah. <laughs> so what happened was whenever there is a king that ruled um when the Ferdowsi is there uh, they give him like some profit or like some money and he includes them in the book wow. so it's really funny because <laughs> you know that this book is manipulated somehow by the rulers um so there's maybe not 100% accuracy, mm -hmm. but, um, but it's really cool that there's like a lot of names that um, maybe got lost in the history. Mm -hmm. um, so he also talked about the mythical creatures that happened before, like who uh, established Iran by itself. I think it's pretty cool because the mythical creatures fought evil to have the land. Wow. But 
which is <laughs> yeah which is really great mm -hmm. so uh one of the mythical creatures actually uh rustum and the a couple uh, and uh, i'm sorry k so um they are not real characters they're totally made up and when people ask him like how you made up your characters mm -hmm. he said um that he got inspired by the old tales of um like old people and you you know you sit down and be like oh i remember this and it never happened but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he got inspired by by like the old tales of Iran mm -hmm. and um, let me uh, clarify who is Rustam. <laughs> uh, so Rustam is a legendary hero. He's not a real person uh, from Iranian mythology mm -hmm. um, and he is totally made up by Ferdowsi. Um, so he's one of the main characters of Ferdowsi's um, poems and he is from the southern provenance of uh, Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, which which is included in Iran at that time um, so his mother is the princess of Kabul so he got a great connection with Kabul and um, he got very famous about this one poem, which is called The Seven Labors of Rustam. So you need to have like seven labors in order to um, uh, like justify yourself for this person, which is Kai. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm gonna talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Kai is also mythology. He's the legendary ruler. Uh, that ruled Iran um, in the Kainan Kaina, Kaina dynasty. I hope I'm saying these words right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put a disclaimer, it's okay. And I'm sorry, I don't want to offend anyone, <laughs> but <laughs> um, so he, uh, when he was ruler, um, Rustam, the hero, need to, needed to justify himself to this ruler, uh, and one thing was to pay a mortgage to him, uh, just to uh, keep him as a hero. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really interesting how this all played out. So, um, just uh, so you know who they are in the painting. So Rustam is the one um, that is kneeling down. Um, if you can see him, he is wearing, oh no, in the other manuscript. Okay. In the Met manuscript. Oh, right here. So he's the one, yeah, he's the one kneeling down with the purple and you know, he got the helmet. So you know, he's a hero. And the one is wearing white is the uh, emperor. Or the ruler at that time and i found it really interesting that the ruler and the hero have distinguished uh different features mm -hmm. um so it's really interesting how that plays um so i was thinking maybe um his roots are like because he's from kabul and the other person from like asia maybe there's a distinguish in the art style which mm -hmm. is really interesting mm -hmm. um so if you guys want i can translate this poem yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so i can uh, read for you the translation of the met poem which we have a clear translation for Mulad. <laughs> so um it says rustum his father Zal has a son uh, and his son Farmaz come from Kabul to pay homage to the newly enthroned Kai. Rustam kisses the ground before Shah, who descendants from the throne uh, greet the hero who had uh, readed his father Saij Fah. Help them saying this right. Uh, 
in the miniature, uh, everything thrown uh, placed in the right with the usual gar gardeners stand behind it. Um, so yeah, um, this is uh, a little bit of the translation. I don't think that translates the whole poem, but um, it's, it explains like what's going on, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing about um, Mongol manuscript is that um, they, they used to show uh, power and wealth and that is by having the best quality paper. And because we still have that paper and it's still pretty in pretty good condition. So it says a lot about the quality of the paper itself. Uh, also, um, they would, so the blue thing uh, in the background mm -hmm. would be Laps Lasley which is very rare um, to actually find and it's very expensive. And the golden, uh, also in the background, the golden uh, thing that <laughs> like this, uh, yeah, this bar is, will be gold leaf um, and will be actual gold. Um, so it's really interesting how they use very like extraordinary materials just to show the power and the wealth of the Mongols uh, themselves. Um, so I think, why did I choose this like poem specifically to compare it to the other poem that we have in the museum? It's because it has a similar art style um, somewhat, not really, but somewhat. Um, it has like a lot of similarities um, in how it plays. This um, also the the manuscript that we have is also illuminated, um, so it it has gold leaf and maybe somewhat slightly. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure because I didn't see it in person. But, right. Um, it maybe have similar quality. I'm pretty sure this paper quality is very good because it lasted until now. Mm -hmm. um, so um, so it, when the Mongols took over, they took over most of uh, Asia. So they would have access uh, to great paper and that could be either from China or from Egypt. And uh, I'm not sure where is this um, specific manuscript is from, but this is the highest quality paper for sure. But it, um, yeah. Oh, but it is interesting though to look at the subject matter because mm -hmm. the more I look at it, while he is on his knees as you translate the text, we have yeah. someone here that looks almost similar, yeah. um, in homage of some sort. And sorry if I'm jumping the gun here, because uh, it's it does look identical. Like this would this person is definitely elevated and is in lapis lazuli with the little gold leafing dots. Yeah. Um, so I think that's really interesting to compare and contrast to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And um, I'm not sure about the calligraphy though. Um, may, I think there is a language difference um, and that could happen because um, different places in Asia have their own uh, calligraphy style and their own um, letters mm -hmm. even though it all come from the arabic letters every culture has very different and distinguished uh, letters so i'm not really sure uh about this um but yeah and just a disclaimer for our audience um because we started this internship while it was still uh covid heavy and yeah. due to safety um, of not only our staff but the students as well they weren't allowed to come to our campus and actually see these pieces in person. So we had to work from pictures. And we've had these pieces, as you can see from our accession, ever since 1958 for this manuscript, and then the one before, 54. And we only had three pieces of information to work from. The title, it's a manuscript, and we know it's not English. <laughs> 
so her presentation is all original research and uh, she really had not much to go by and so it's up to her and luckily swad was able to help too from last semester to really help guide her in this research process so really this is all original this is all reamed ideas and um, this was all done on her own so this is accelerated studies especially for an undergraduate battling COVID-19 and trying to maintain some type of normalcy so I def definitely want to throw that out there of why is it so impressive and so helpful to us because prior to Reem's help again I only knew the same thing Reem knew when she first started this internship and this is all the wealth of knowledge that she's willing to not only find but share with us in this program today. Yeah. I was pleased to do it. Uh, I <laughs> loved it. Uh, I don't know much about Iranian poetry to begin with. Um, disclaimer, I'm Arab and I don't speak uh, Persian. So it's really hard to like navigate through that. But it's really interesting um, to me to have this culture um, to like look through. Well, we definitely appreciate it. And out of curiosity, Reem, was there anything that was uh, extremely difficult during this process that you had to brainstorm and work through? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is a couple, but to me, the, the very thing that stood out is writing. Mm -hmm. And um, in a calligraphy manuscript, writing is everything. <laughs> and when I, like I searched a lot about like how to get this writing and I talked to a lot of like Persian people and they have no idea and I was shocked like <laughs> they told me this is really old nobody speaks it anymore and um that's why it was so hard to translate um and I'm sure if we got the translation maybe like in next year's um we will find some very interesting thing because calligraphy is again is all about writing and if it's um in calligraphy then it's the best writing that we could ever get um so i think this is great yeah <laughs> that's the difficult thing that yeah <laughs> laying the foundation for the next researchers <laughs> Hopefully. yes <laughs> well Reem, it's really been a pleasure and a delight to get to know you this past semester and thank you for sharing your research and your expertise we have a whole new understanding of these manuscripts and i'm very grateful that we could share that with the evansville public so thank you so much for sharing your cultural lens with us Thank you so much. This has been a lifetime opportunity to work with the museum. And it's been great to know you and to understand how everything works in the art creator world. <laughs> and <laughs> I aspire to be like you someday. Well, this is <laughs> Thanks, so I can be told so. though. <laughs> Before I get too emotional, on that note, Reem, it was a pleasure working with you and we'll see you shortly. We'll see Thank you. Bye.